Hi, it's King T here, and in this video, I am ranking my top 25 favorite roller coasters. As of 2023, I have been to 13 major amusement parks, six of which have rides featured on this list, so you will see the same parks dominating. Unfortunately, some parks didn't have any rides to make the list, and these include Disneyland, California Adventure, the Adventure Dome in Las Vegas, Mall of America's Nickelodeon Universe, Universal Studios, Bay Beach, and finally SeaWorld San Diego. There were a lot of really good rides that didn't quite make the list, so places 30 through 26 will be honorable mentions. Number 30, Batman the Ride Clones at Six Flags. Number 29, Rougarou at Cedar Point. Number 28, Viper at Six Flags Great America. Number 27, Patriot at Worlds of Fun. And number 26, Scream at Six Flags Magic Mountain. These rides are all great, but they just missed the top 25. Starting off the list at number 25 is Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Great America. This is a clone of the original at Six Flags over Georgia, and I think it's a pretty fun flying coaster. The drop always feels steeper and faster than it actually is, the pretzel loop is always fantastic, and the highlight of pretty much every B&M flyer. I really don't have anything against Superman, except it breaking down 50% of the time, so it's a really nice place to start the list. Coming in at the number 24 spot is Silver Bullet at Knott's Berry Farm. I really enjoyed this for all four of the rides I got last year, and besides the shallow drop, this is a really solid ride. The forces are great, the random overbanked turn really took me by surprise, and each element packs a punch. Additionally, I really like it setting over the water. All of these things put together is what makes this my third favorite inverted coaster. We're going right across the park for number 23, which is Hang Time. Hang Time is a little bit of a wild card, but I just barely enjoyed it more than Silver Bullet. The drop is really great for two reasons. It has a beyond vertical drop, while most other dive coasters have a 90 degree drop. And two, it only has lap bars. The floater over the top of that drop is what makes this ride slightly better in my opinion. The inversions aren't anything special though, so it can only rank this high. For number 22, we're going back to Six Flags Great America for X-Flight, the B&M wing coaster. There's one thing that X-Flight does really well, and it's near misses. The inline twist through the tower is my all-time favorite near miss element. The restraints do tighten, however, and sitting on that brake run is kind of uncomfortable, but I try not to let that ruin this otherwise great ride. Busch Gardens Tampa has one of the best collections of coasters, and Kumba is no exception. This is probably the most intense B&M coaster I've been on, except Batman the Ride, and sometimes it's even too much. Like most of the coasters at the Busch Gardens parks, Kumba's setting is great at the back of the park and you just seem to get lost in the woods. Every single element has crazy forces and the pacing is flawless. And I'm also surprised that nobody talks about the helix through the tunnel, which is one of my favorite parts. Next up is a controversial pick, but barely making the top 20 is Magnum XL 200. I said all of this in the Cedar Point video, and while the finale is epic, the rest of the ride doesn't make it a top 15 or top 10 coaster for me. It's got classic arrow jank to it, which I am personally not a fan of, but that airtime finale is good enough to put it in the top 20. Coming in at the number 19 spot is Prowler at Worlds of Fun. This is probably the least recent coaster I've ridden on this list, but I think it's a really solid ride. In fact, it's my third favorite wooden coaster, beating Zippin' Pippin, American Eagle, and Viper. The pacing is awesome, and it never loses speed, so that airtime is fantastic. I only got two rides on it, but those two placed it this high on the list. Placing at number 18 is Full Throttle at Six Flags Magic Mountain, or as enthusiasts call it, Half Throttle. Full Throttle would probably be close to the top 10 if it weren't for those breaks on the drop that kill the second foot part of the ride. Other than that, the launch is great, the loop has the best hang time I've ever been on, and the backwards launch through the inversion is a really cool feeling, so full throttle places here. Moving back to Busch Gardens Tampa, we have the Intamin Blitz Cheetah Hunt. The only thing that makes me enjoy Cheetah Hunt more than full throttle is the length. Other than that, these two coasters are neck and neck, and I think the edge might even go to full throttle, but Cheetah Hunt is such a long ride that manages to keep it interesting the whole way. For number 16, we're flying back to Ohio to ride Raptor, the B&M Invert. Raptor, in my opinion, is the most well-rounded invert I've been on. It's tall, actually has a steep drop, has seven whippy inversions, 
and its intensity can only be matched by a few other rides. Raptor is a great coaster, but it just barely missed the top 15. For number 15, it's back to where we came for Shikra at Busch Gardens Tampa. I think that I enjoy the dive coasters more than a lot of other enthusiasts, and I don't really know why. There's just something about the massive 200 foot vertical drop that makes me think this ride is awesome. The rest of the ride is good too, and the second drop also gives some airtime. The splashdown is also a cool effect, and it's the only coaster with a splashdown to make this list. From one 200 foot coaster to another, Mamba at Worlds of Fun takes the number 14 spot. This was my first hyper coaster, so it holds a special place in my heart. I personally enjoyed Mamba more than Magnum, for a couple of reasons. One, Mamba is smooth, not RMC smooth, but a whole lot more tolerable than Magnum. Second, I thought that the first half was much stronger, and the second half was good too. Mamba is a really well-rounded coaster, so it gets number 14. Back to Cedar Point for another dive coaster, Valraven. Valraven has so much more than Sheikra, which is why it places higher. The first half is exactly the same, but the second half is really where Valraven sticks out. It has two more inversions, and that last slow motion 0G roll is my favorite part of the ride, other than the drop. Right across the park from Valraven is Gatekeeper, the number 12 pick. Gatekeeper is X-Flight, but so much larger, and you really feel it on the ride. Gatekeeper feels like it has a lot of power for a wing coaster, and there are some moments that might even make people gray out. And yes, those keyholes are fantastic near misses. Gatekeeper rounds out the really good supporting coasters, so now it's on to the elite class. Just barely missing the top 10 is by far the most controversial pick on this list. X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Yes, I do understand that this coaster is one of the most unique models ever made, but I don't think it's the right fit for me. However, I do recognize that it's the most insane coaster I have ever been on. The way it throws you around is unmatched, as well as its intensity. But there are 10 coasters that I like more than X2. Kicking off the top 10 is Montu, the last coaster from Busch Gardens, until I finally ride Iron Gwazi. Montu is by far my favorite invert, and it's not even close. It has all the elements and intensity that Raptor has, and the best setting. Flying through those trenches, it's something else. The first time I rode it, I was totally caught off guard by the final corkscrew, making it one of my all-time favorite inversions. Coming in at the number 9 spot is Max Force at Six Flags Great America. This is by far my favorite launch. 0 to 78 in less than 2 seconds, and it feels like you're shot out of a cannon. Riding this in the front row is a must, and there's nothing else in the US with that kind of acceleration, RIP top, top thrill dragster. Other than the launch, Max Force is still a fun ride with great inversions and hang time. The fastest inversion is also one of my favorite inversions of all time. Max Force is a great ride, and I'm proud to have it in my top 10. Just barely beating Max Force is the ride that's a one minute walk away, Raging Bull. Raging Bull is my highest ranking traditional hyper coaster, and for a good reason. The drop in the back row is insane, and one of my favorite drops. Some people say the rest of the ride is mediocre and doesn't have airtime, but I love how unique it is. There's plenty of airtime in the smaller hills, but the twister layout makes it a nice difference from a ride like, like Magnum, where it just kills you with the same element more than 5 times in a row. My favorite B&M coaster ranks at number 7, Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is the same model as Superman, but it really doesn't feel like it. Tatsu is just so much bigger and faster and has a unique layout. The inversions are all really fun, but we need to talk about that pretzel loop. On its own, it's probably one of, if not the most intense element I've been on, and that moment alone makes this ride worth it. You lose all sense of direction as it tries to push you through the train. This singular element is probably my favorite element on any coaster. It's that good. Coming in at number 6 is a ride that I really wanted to put in the top 5. It was in the top 2 last year, but there are 4 new entries that are all elite. I really didn't want to have to do this, but Goliath at Six Flags Great America gets the number 6 spot. Goliath is fantastic and it has one of if not my favorite drop on any coaster. It's somehow better than the drop on the taller hyper coasters and dive coasters, and even beats Steel Vengeance. The airtime on Goliath's drop is almost unmatched. The rest of the ride is great too. The airtime hill provides powerful airtime. The hang time on both inversions is also really good. 
All these things are just made better by the fact that this is a wood coaster, which makes these elements feel illegal. The singular thing that stopped this coaster from ranking higher is the length. It just feels short, and a little incomplete, but that's probably because all five of the top five are really long rides. Starting off the top five is the other best drop on Millennium Force. Because I don't really like Superman, I consider this the tallest and fastest coaster I've been on, and those things are definitely not wasted here. The drop is so amazing in any row you sit in, but the front and back are undoubtedly the best spots. Just like so many other rides on this list, Millennium Force has a ton of power and flies through its layout. And I don't care what people say, it is not Millennium Forceless. The wind that hits you is so much that I started crying, or maybe it was my first ride at Cedar Point, and I almost thought it was my favorite coaster. My fourth favorite coaster is another one of the more recent rides I got. My favorite wood coaster is Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This is one of the few rides where the second half is much better than the first. The drop is honestly one of the most underwhelming parts of the ride, because everything else has what feels like too much chaos and force. The drop from the mid course is where the ride turns it up to 11, and it flies through the structure with a perfect mix of airtime, positive Gs, and laterals. Whoever found out that they didn't need the mid course on, good job, it made this ride S tier. And now we've made it to the top 3. If you watch my videos frequently, you'll probably know which three rides these are. I did not get to ride Iron Gwazi and I'm sad. For the first time in probably five years, Twisted Colossus is number three, not number one. I really do love this ride. It has such perfect amount of airtime, hang time, and a good amount of whip and forces. I really don't care that it doesn't duel much anymore, it's still amazing. Well, there's two coasters left, both from the same park. These two completely destroy the competition. Nothing else on the list can really come close. When I rode Maverick for the first time this summer, there was no doubt in my mind that it was my new favorite. Which is why it gets second place? Keep watching, you'll find out later. It really could earn first place, and I would not be surprised. It is quite possibly the perfect coaster. It doesn't need height, it's got more than enough of everything else. Speed, airtime, laterals, positive forces, crazy drop, and a launch. There's nothing that I would change about Maverick. However, there's just one more ride that I like a little bit more. The gold medal as my favorite roller coaster goes to Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. Airtime is my favorite force on a roller coaster, and Steel Vengeance has more than enough of it. And it's really good airtime too. The drop is great, but there are so many better moments on this ride and even the inversions pack a good punch. Steel Vengeance is my number one, and it definitely deserves it. Out of 68 coasters, Steel Vengeance outdoes every single one. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. If you have thoughts, feel free to leave a comment down below. I read all of them. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. King T out.